Having gotten the five most basic ideas for the way social networks are shaped, here are the next five. Number six, cost affects scale. If a network makes it easy for people to connect to each other, many people connect to each other. If a network makes it hard for people to connect to one another, fewer people will connect to one another, and they'll tend to do so in smaller, denser groups. There's reasons to prefer either pattern. There's good aspects and bad aspects about both low-cost and high-cost connection. But the choice of whether or not it's expensive, it's difficult to connect to someone else, affects the scale of the network. Number seven, large networks are made up of small networks. No social network ever has a completely uniform sort of connection across all of its members. What you get instead are small clusters of people who are connected to each other in larger, looser clusters of those clusters. And those larger, looser clusters are connected in even larger, even looser clusters. This is sometimes called a scale-free pattern because at any scale of the network, you can look at a large network and say, I can see the smaller networks that this is made up of. Once you understand that large networks are made up of smaller networks, you know what to look for. Whatever network you are looking at, ask yourself, what are the networks of people who are inside this network and how do they connect to one another? Eight, links have direction. There are some social networks where two people who are connected can always automatically send messages to one another. On RenRen, Ren, if we're friends, then messages can go back and forth between us. There are other networks where the links only go in one direction. If I follow you on Weibo, I can see what you write, but you don't follow me just because I followed you. You can follow me and I follow you together, but even that isn't the same as a link on RenRen Ren because it isn't automatic that both of, those, both of those connections get made. You can unlink to me, I can unlink to you. It matters an enormous amount whether or not the designers of a social network have chosen to make a link one directional, as in a follow relationship, or two directional, as in a friend relationship. And the choice of the direction that the links flow in has an enormous effect on how messages move through the network. Nine, fame is an imbalance of attention. For a long time, people thinking about the media environment assumed that fame, as it existed in the 20th century, movie stars, people on television, pop stars, was a result of the media being one way. You can see people on television, but they can't see you. You can see people on the movie screen, but they can't see you. When the internet came along, the idea was, at least in the 1990s, that since the media was inherently two-way, this would undo the effects of fame. This obviously has not happened. And it hasn't happened because fame turns out to be not about technology. Fame turns out to be attention. On the internet, fame reestablished itself uh, because it allowed for more people to give their attention to one individual than that individual could possibly return. Even when the medium allows for two-way links, not all of those links could be two-way simply because famous people don't have the time to respond to every message. So fame turns out to be about social structure and not about technology. 10, massive inequality is the norm. If you look at almost any piece of social media, what you will find is the same pattern over and over again, where a small number of people have an enormous number of friends or followers or posts or tags a moderate number of people have a moderate amount of those things. And then there is a long, flat tail of people who participate very little. You will see this if you look at the number of followers on Weibo. You will see this if you look at the number of posts on WeChat Moments. Over and over again, this pattern shows up. It shows up, in fact, so often that it's a kind of a signature for social media. So when you see a new social media platform forming, what you're looking for is whether or not this massive inequality establishes itself, and if so, where and how. Because in large, loose networks where anybody can pay attention to anybody else, or anyone can post any amount of content they like, you'll always find a few people producing an incredibly outsized amount of whatever is on that platform.